just been a long time since you've had sex or it's it's becomes it becomes more and more time in between sex mm -hmm. then you're in trouble or your relationship is in trouble but nonetheless I you can get it back though you can, yeah you could definitely get it back by dating your spouse right exactly so channel if you are brand new it's fine welcome my name is Marcus this is my wife Carolyn and we are married and blended all right that's the new intro I say married you say blended sure and and that's that I was able to get through that smoothly uh, nonetheless let's go ahead and get started we have a very fun topic to talk to you guys about today and that is dating your spouse but before we do that, what do we want? What do we want to tell them? I don't know. Maybe subscribe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to to the channel, and you know, hit that bell to ensure whenever we drop new content that you are the first to know about it. And that's that. All right. So, dating your spouse. Spouse. First, maybe we could start off with, you know, talking about what does dating your, your spouse even mean? What does that mean to you? So, dating your spouse to me means that you are continuing to go after your spouse, meaning you're not letting up. Yeah. Um, you're not. No matter how long. No matter how long. I'm not saying that the energy is always going to be high and, and the enthusiasm is always going to be there. That's going to... It's ebbs and flows. Right. So just highs and lows with mm -hmm. that. That's natural. Mm -hmm. um, but the main thing is that just not doing at all should not take place. That's so. true. That's true. And how long have we been together? A long time. Like how long? You answer the question. No, I asked you, like, I asked I you a question. Like, no, I feel like you need me to assist you. <laughs> I mean, we've been married two years and some change. Okay. You know. We've been together, I think, but what would you say? What would you say? Well, just answer the question. I ask you a question. Answer the question. They're waiting. All right, we've been together like 10 years or something like that. It was coming up on 10 years. Coming up on 10 years. See, I know it. I'm testing you up. But anyway, I, and I would say our relationship, we, man, we have dated and we, we continue to date and date and date. And we think is, is very important. I mean, when you stop dating or what, not dating your spouse looks like is basically when you get too comfortable, mm -hmm. right? And I think there's a comfort in a relationship. You want to get, you want to get there. You want to, yeah. you want to get to some type of comfort level. But I think there's a big difference between being comfortable mm -hmm. and being complacent. It's a huge difference. You definitely don't want to embark on. Uh, complacency in your relationship whether it's um you guys are just dating or mm -hmm. especially if you're married because you're in it for, you're supposed to be in it for the long haul mm -hmm. so you definitely want to keep the energy up as much as you can as best as you can and you don't want your spouse to feel as though they're not sought after um your spouse should always feel wanted Mm -hmm. Of course, people go through their ups and downs, sure. arguments, and you name it. But at the end of the day, your spouse should not feel as though they don't belong or they have no no purpose in your Agreed. union. So that's that's a big a big deal, and that could be a big factor which will determine the direction and the dynamic of your relationship. Yeah, agree. I mean, like complacency that once you once you reach those type of levels mm -hmm. 
and there's levels to, to everything, right? Like you, like you, you want to ensure you keep high levels of things. What, um, like, like respect, communication, tr tr trust, communication. Right. Those levels always have to be high, like super high. Right. You want to maintain that, but high complacent complacency levels is not what you want. Because what that means, once you reach that that level, that basically means you started to take your spouse for granted. Mm -hmm. You started to basically take your relationship for granted. Yeah. And Gosh. and that that could lead that could lead into disaster. Yeah. It's only downhill from there. Once you become complacent. Um, you know, in some cases, people do catch themselves and mm -hmm. turn around and seek the help that they need, whether it's like consulting with a friend or mm -hmm. actually getting professional help. Um, and that's great. You know, that's what you want to happen. But majority of the time when there's complacency in a relationship, it goes downhill. So why don't you want complacency? I guess what I'm trying to say is, why why is it important to continue to date you know what i mean yeah i feel like there should be no room in your relationship for complacency Agreed. at Agreed. all whatsoever once complacency seeps into your relationship all that does really is it increases the chances of your spouse being intrigued by another person um and that hurts oh for sure so you know, they can easily get swept off their feet That's true. by somebody else because there's a void there and they're used to or yeah they're used to doing things with you and um, it's no longer happening so now they're probably most likely going to be seeking that activity and that attention and those kind gestures from somebody else. That's a good point. That's a good point. And then also another point that's very that's very important to hit on. Less dating probably means less intimacy. Yeah. Less intimacy means less sex. Yeah. That's right. And I and I say that because intimacy and sex is different. We could probably have a whole complete different conversation on that. But nonetheless the the less you know less intimacy le less sex that once you start going down that route that road that's your relationship is almost like down the drain now that that doesn't mean it's completely gone because you started to have sex less because as we mentioned everything is ebbs and flows but if when when it's a consistently long time or, or it's just been a long time since you've had sex or it's it's becomes it becomes more and more time in between sex mm -hmm. then you're in trouble oh your relationship is in trouble but nonetheless I, you can get it back though. You can, yeah you could definitely get it back by dating your spouse right exactly so talking about dating your spouse clearly what does what does that look like right so what what does a date with your spouse consist of so I feel like people tend to, and this is males and females, tend to um, shy away from dates sometimes because they think of how it's going to impact their pockets, right? That's true. Um, Some people have expensive tastes. Right. And that's fine. You should. <laughs> <laughs> but you you it, missed my, my, my head nod. Uh, that's cool. Keep nodding. Not again. Remind yourself. Not this way. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, clearly, you know. Expensive taste. <laughs> but, um, that's fine to have expensive taste, by the way. I don't know where he's trying to go there. I'm just saying, you need to have a balance. You do have a balance. Though. That's why we work. That's why we work. So, back to what I was saying. <laughs> um, to have a date or to go on a date, it does not always entail um, a fancy restaurant or, or um, you know, a nice venue or entertainment, right? So you can go on a date and not have these things. Granted, food and entertainment does enhance the date, 
-hmm. but it shouldn't define the day oh. at all. Preach. Please preach. <laughs> <laughs> so some dates consist of, I don't know, a walk over the Brooklyn Bridge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you have in mind? Yeah, I mean, you could do that. Walk over the Brooklyn Bridge. Mm -hmm. Or whatever bridge, whatever. Pick a bridge. <laughs> Pick a bridge. Walk over that. Um, a free concert. We're clearly, we're, we're from New York. Um, a free concert, whether that's in Central Park or wherever. Mm -hmm. or, or you could even go on a bike ride. Shout out to Good Company. Hey. <laughs> you could go on a bike ride. Like, it, it's, it's so many things that you can do that doesn't impact your pockets. Mm -hmm. A date does n you do not have to eat <laughs> on every single date. I'm, I, I think I gotta say that. I might have to zoom in. Say but again. you do not have to eat on every single date. You don't need to drink. What are people drinking out there? 1942. Oh Lord, you do not need to drink 1942 <laughs> on every single date. You don't need Casamigos on every date. Actually, it's pretty good. You I'm, don't need to tap the Azul Bell. Oh, on every date. <laughs> <laughs> put that bottle down. That is a fact. You can put that down, big fella. Just relax. <laughs> Enjoy each other's company, and and that's that. Mm -hmm. Agree. Definitely agree. So make it your own. Um, as long as both of you are are in tune with each other and you're detached from the world, that's good enough. Like just that one-on-one -on -one time. Everything else can come and can definitely again enhance the date. So food, entertainment, and everything you could think of but it's not necessary so don't overthink what a date should be based mm -hmm. on society you know can, can i can i put you on the spot sure let me put you on the spot now i want to ask you i hope you could think of something good <laughs> what was your favorite date come to on you, you can't you can't think of well hold on now just, we've been together how many years right that's what i'm saying like you just disclosed that we've been together for almost a decade that's crazy by the way and you really expect me to go through the catalog of dates we've been on no you don't i said i said give me an example give me your, your oh one of your favorite dates that i took you on Unless you're telling me. There's so many. Wow. Wow. There's been so many. I can't really think of one in particular. Like, we go on a lot of fun dates. And we go on a lot of fun dates, but you can't think of <laughs> one fun date. That don't all include food or entertainment. Oh, oh, I mean, it could be. All right, so let me tell you one thing. One of my favorite dates, maybe <laughs> it, it involves food, uh, <laughs> but I think one of my favorite dates that you took me on was a picnic. It was cute. It was, it was, she's smooth, y'all. Oh, I think I said this before, like the, the first video or what, whatever it is. <laughs> Um, actually, it's definitely the first video, and um, I'll link that video below, by the way. And she's very smooth. She she's very thoughtful and 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 tactical. She go she knows how to plan things. And um, we went on a calm picnic that was by the by the water. Um, I forgot exactly what park that was. I don't um, remember either. Just something I searched. But he, here's, here's how smooth she is. She kind of... She didn't tell me exactly what to wear. Oh, it's for my birthday. I remember. She didn't tell me exactly what to wear. But she kind of... She was like, oh, babe, maybe you could wear the, this peach and, and this and that. She basically matched my outfit to the cake that she she brought to the picnic. I'm gonna post those pictures on yeah. Instagram. <laughs> she, so. 
it, it, it was it was dope and she actually she bought a a picnic bag that we still have that we need to probably we could probably dust off before this it was good money before the summer's <laughs> over she brought the wine and everything it was a smooth very calm date very what wasn't expensive or i mean you paid for the food or you made it yeah, did you make it or no i didn't make it i bought it locally okay but nonetheless, nonetheless, that was that was one of my fun dates. It sounds very, very simple, but sometimes simplicity is is, is what's best. Now I, I was speaking for a long time just to give you some time. You can't think of one. I could think of one, but just say it. Even if it was, even if it, it involved food. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> or if it has involved some tequila or something. Okay, no, it did not involve tequila. Okay. Um, but we were She's not a real big drinker anyway, by the way. I'm not horrible when it comes to drinking. <laughs> but we were sitting in, uh, it wasn't even a park. Okay. This was like, you know, in like an island in the middle of like a big street in Manhattan. Okay. Um, we were walking, I want to say from brunch. And even though you would think that the brunch portion of it was the date, what I remember most is sitting in that little portion of the street, in mm -hmm. the middle of the street rather. Okay. And we were just sitting on a bench, chit chatting and um, playing with Snapchat fil filters. So oh, like, I remember that. It was so much fun to me. Like I had. And you still? I feel like time. you still have the. Do you still have video clips? I don't. Know. I, I don't wonder know. if we could figure out how to post it. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a I good that. time. Just being silly. I remember. In that. the middle of two major streets. <laughs> um, I don't know. That just popped up in my head, but yeah, that was fun times. Say the, the, real real the, the, genuine. There we go. I mean, let alone the other elaborate dates we've been yeah, on. Yeah, we've been and on countless so steakhouses. And, but again, you don't need to eat on every day. Um, <laughs> what about how do you think I would date dating life or, or you know nightlife and whatnot? How do you think that's been impacted by quarantine? I mean, it's definitely been impacted because there aren't many options. Mm. Uh, in terms of going out, so we can't just pick a venue and go. Um, and then the fact that we're also expecting that also, you know, eliminates a few options or the bars and yeah. places like that. But for the most part, I think that we have been maintaining. Yeah, I agree. Good. Like, we still get out, we still do things, we still arrange time on the couch where like you know let's watch this and half the time honestly we don't end up watching what we thought we were gonna watch but just sitting next to each other and talking or I don't know. yeah and I think that that is is, is big just, and and I'm talking about sitting next to each other and talking because I feel like the more you and I we advance in our careers and we have a family it's, it's so much going on yeah. that it's extremely easy to to disconnect and yeah. and stay disconnected almost because y your mind is running on like a thousand different things like hey i gotta do this i gotta do that you, you structure your, your day mm -hmm. and sometimes you could structure your day without making time for your spouse but i think we do such a great job in that like we watch the news together. Now I'm not saying that's a, a, a date, but like we do that every time. But for sure, that's a big deal for us, actually. Yeah. Let's <laughs> watch the news. She hates when we miss the 10 o'clock news. But anyway, that's another another story. Um, yeah, I think how we look on a Friday night on our couch is completely different because of the quarantine. Like, we get dressed up. Well, I get dressed up. You do it with cologne. I, because I'm, you know, I'm trying to make sure you... Weird. <laughs> anyway, 
I think we we talked about the importance. I feel like they got it. I think so too. All right. Well, again, this is that. That's it for dating your spouse. Make sure you like this video, comment, let us know. So give us some date dating spots, some of the places, some of your favorite dates, whatever it is. Ask us questions in the comments. Um, very important. Subscribe to the video, and we'll see you again. All right. Have a good one.